you like to be alone? If the answer is yes, you're probably an introvert with some very powerful qualities. You see, people always think that extroverts are superior to introverts. They call introverts anti-social nerds. But the truth is that most of the top performers in the world are introverts. That's right, 98% of the world's billionaires are introverts. Don't get me wrong, being an introvert does not guarantee success. As a matter of fact, the majority of introverts are actually outcasts. They hide their shyness and social anxiety behind the term introvert. Instead of fixing their problems, they use their introversion as an excuse. How sad. Being an introvert is not an excuse for anything, and everyone can improve their social skills. In fact, being an introvert can be a superpower if you know how to use it. We'll cover six amazing qualities of people who like to be alone. And there's a bonus lesson at the end, so be sure to watch the whole video. Number one energy and focus. There is a perception that extroverts have more energy than introverts, but this is not entirely true. Extroverted people get their energy from socializing and working with others. That is their gift, but they are uncomfortable being alone for too long. That is their downside. If you're an introvert, you're the opposite. Too much social interaction can drain your energy, but at the same time you're going to get energy when you're on your own or with much smaller groups of people. That is why introverts often surprise others with results out of nowhere. It is easier for them to focus and do work in solitude without the burden of loneliness. Make no mistake about it, no one is 100% introverted or 100% extroverted. We're all a mix of both but it's up to you to figure out which is your dominant side so you can use your gifts to your advantage. Number two, creative minds. Extroverts are often influenced by what's mainstream and popular, but introverts tend to have their own preferences which are less influenced by what's trendy. Because they spend more time alone, they develop perspectives, ideas, and insights that are out of the norm. Albert Einstein, the introverted physicist once said, the monotony of solitude of a quiet life stimulates the creative mind. And that's true, introverts are naturally more creative than extroverts. When it comes to making money, extroverts tend to have an advantage in sales, but introverts have an advantage in marketing. And when the two work together, they can move mountains. Introvert-extrovert is the most powerful business partnership I've ever seen. They work incredibly well together. Number three, calm and calculated. People who like to be alone are often reserved. They do not open up easily. This may seem to be a curse, but in fact, it's a gift. It tends to make them more calm and calculating. In contrast to people who crave attention, introverts are comfortable in silence and don't feel the need to force a conversation. Of course, it's best to strike a balance. The extrovert should learn when to shut up, and the introvert should learn to be more entertaining and engage in small talk, because there are times when it can come in handy. Number four, sharp observation. People who like being alone are often very observant. While others are talking and processing loudly, introverts are actually soaking up the information being presented. They're thinking critically, they may look like they're just sitting quietly, but they have a very sharp eye for reading the room. Furthermore, they're more likely to notice people's body language and facial expressions. Number five, quality friends. Introverts often don't have many friends. Sometimes they don't have any friends at all. But when they do have friends, they choose them carefully. They need to choose their companions wisely because introverts can feel their energy drained by being around others. They would rather have a few close, trusted friendships in which to invest their time and energy, as opposed to a large network of people whom they know. Number six, great leaders. People think that all great leaders are extroverts, but that's just not true. Believe it or not, those who tend to be more introverted are predisposed to become great leaders. Why is that? They don't feel the need to step into the spotlight and take all the credit for the group's successes. Rather, they are likely to highlight the strengths of their teams. 
And because introverts tend to process information more slowly and thoughtfully than their more extroverted counterparts, introverted leaders tend to learn more about the people they lead. That said, the best leaders have both extroverted and introverted qualities and, more importantly, the self-awareness to know when to use each style. Now we've just gone through the six qualities that introverts have, and while I could list more, or go through all the advantages that extroverts have, we're not going to do that. Instead, I am going to finish the video with a bonus lesson. The truth about introverts and extroverts. If you've made it this far, then listen up, because this is a valuable one. Whenever there are two terms that are polar opposites, and there's a clear prejudice against one of the two, you should always ask yourself why that is. The term toxic masculinity is a good example of this. You will never hear toxic femininity, but you will always hear toxic masculinity. There's a clear bias there. And why is that? Because it's a term that was made up by feminists, and it's nonsense. In a way, you could say the same thing about introversion and extroversion. There is a clear bias against introverts. They are considered less than extroverts, almost like it is a bad thing to be an introvert. So, in your opinion, why is it that there is this bias against introverts? Is it because introverts are incompetent, socially awkward, or shy? No, it's because people don't know what introversion really means. They think it means social anxiety or shyness. That couldn't be further from the truth. You need to understand the true definition of introverts and extroverts. I'm talking about the original definition Carl Jung introduced. Understand that neither introvert nor extrovert is superior to the other. Once you have that understanding, the next step is to figure out which one is your dominant side. Because we are all a mix of both. Once you've figured out whether you're more of an introvert or an extrovert, then look at what your strengths are and lean into them. Now, I know people will think that you shouldn't label yourself introverted or extroverted. I get it. If you put a label on yourself that weakens you or helps you cope, that label is a curse. But that is only true if the label is weakening you. If you give yourself a label that empowers you, that label becomes a gift. For example, if you label yourself as a warrior, then that label is forcing you to get better. It is holding you to a high standard. The same goes for labeling introverted and extroverted. If you use introvert to cope with social anxiety, shyness, and other things, the label is a curse. But if you see introvert for what it really is, the true definition and all its benefits, that label can become a gift. So tell me, are you an introvert or an extrovert? By the way, if you want to level up in life, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching. Until next time.